Hello there. My name is John Stefano, and I'm one of the chef instructors at the Culinary Center. I'm proud to be coming to you today from my home kitchen in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Today, I'd like to talk to you about making and cooking and grilling great steaks. What I've found is, is if you follow some of the simple, fundamental techniques, some quick, easy steps, you end up cooking, eating, and enjoying the best steak that you've had all year. So let's get started. We're gonna talk about some of the ingredients that we have in front of us today, then we'll walk through the steps, and then we'll get started on our, uh, our cooking on our cast iron grill. I think it's imperative that you develop a relationship with your local butcher, either the supermarket or the butcher that's been in your neighborhood for decades, whatever it is, introduce yourself, talk to them. They'll help you with special cuts of proteins, different types of meats, different types of choices, and they'll help you develop and create some of the best recipes you know, that you'll have and in, uh, enjoy for years to come. So what steaks did I choose today? I chose New York strip steak. Why? Because it's my favorite uh, piece of, uh, of steak. I like the marbleization of it. I like the fat within it. And I think for me, it's the, it's the juiciest. So what are the techniques and how do we get started? I, what I'd like you to do is make sure when you take your protein out of the refrigerator, that you leave it out of refrigeration for a minimum an hour. You can really leave your, your proteins out for up to three hours, but I think uh, if you can keep your, your proteins out for a minimum of an hour, it's gonna be perfectly temped. Why do you not wanna cook with a cold piece of a steak or a cold piece of meat? It'll cook unevenly. If it's at room temperature, then you'll get a nice even sear and it'll be beautifully juicy on the inside. So the first rule of thumb is room temperature protein. Next thing you wanna do is to make sure that your proteins are dry. If you can see here, this is slick, my steak. So what I wanna do is take this and dry our piece of beef. And all you need is some paper towels. And if you pat it dry, you'll see all of that liquid has come off there. That's perfect. I also wanted to show you today a filet. Most people don't realize is if you have a T-bone steak, the New York strip and the filet match perfectly. The filet on the left side or your right and the New York strip. Some people like filets because they're a little bit more tender, uh, a little bit less marbleization. Sometimes I think they can be a little dry. Um, that's why I picked the New York strip steak here because if you take a look at it, it's beautifully marble. Nice fat in here, red, full, this is about a, uh, a 12 ounce piece. I would purchase anywhere between 12 and 14 ounces. Sometimes I think some of the 16 ounces are a little too big. So I'm gonna pat this dry and we're gonna move this off to the, state, uh, off to the side. First rule of thumb, room temperature protein. Second rule is that our, our protein is dry. So when we jump over to the grill, then we're gonna introduce just a small amount of fat. If you're outside on your grill outside, we want you to brush down your grill and keep it clean with a small amount of oil. We're gonna do the same thing in our grill pan when we get started. So if you're ready, we'll be back in a second and we'll jump to our grill pan. Okay, so I'm back here in our stove top and in front of you, I have this absolutely beautiful cast iron grill pan. Now this grill pan is not going to be too different than the grill you have out back, which leads us to the next step of our technique in cooking a great steak, and that is super high heat. What I like to do with your grill out back is to turn the heat up to a high, shut the, uh, the lid on the grill, and let that burn off any food particles you have. Once you've done that, I'd ask you to take a pair of towels and either a towel or a, a series of paper towels. Dip them into some oil, rub them along the grill, and what will that will do? That will help season the pan. It'll create a nice non-stick surface so that when your steak hits the, uh, hits the surface, it sears beautifully and it cooks evenly. At that point, what I want you to do is open the grill and turn it to medium high heat. I currently have our heat at a medium high heat. The reason we want to cook at a medium high to high heat is to make sure that sear 
seals in all the juices of this absolutely delicious New Year's trip. So what do we say rule number one was? Room temperature protein. Rule number two is to make sure that it's dry and we pat it as dry. Rule number three, searing hot pan, searing hot grill, and as I said, for seasoning your grill, rule number four, just a small amount of fat. So I'm gonna take my brush here and just a little uh, oil. I don't wanna use extra virgin olive oil for a multitude of reasons. Most being is probably the most expensive. So either use olive oil or canola oil or vegetable oil. Dip it into your brush and slightly, very lightly, a small, small amount of fat on our grill pan. You'll be able to do the same exact thing with your grill. Once you've done with that, leave that to the side. Now let's jump into the next thought or the next idea, which is seasoning our steaks. Everybody's got a rule about seasoning uh, steaks. Here's what I believe. I think you should take your steak and season it with salt and pepper just moments before you put it on the grill or the grill pan. If you're gonna to choose to season it earlier, I recommend getting it on a grate in a sheet pan and putting a level of salt or a layer of salt, a layer of pepper, leaving it in your refrigerator for anywhere to four to six hours. What that'll do is that'll create this little film on it and for the barbecue aficionados who love seasoning beforehand, they'll find this absolutely ideal. So, if you can take a look, it's a little hard to see on the camera. I have small wisps of smoke. So I'm going to take my, uh, my steak and I'm going to slightly brush it, my New York straight strip, with some extra virgin olive oil or just some regular olive oil, just a little bit. And, and I want to season with salt and pepper on both sides. Turn this over. And as you see these wisps of smokes, I know my pan's at a perfect uh, heat. Okay, so what's the next rule we want to follow? We want to make sure as soon as I put this steak on that I'm only turning it once. So I'll lay the steak here on the grill pan, and then to get grill hash marks, I'll turn it 45 degree angles. So hold on, and let's, uh, let's get cooking. All right, I have my tongs, then I have my steak, my New York strip right in front of you. And now I'm going to lay this in the pan. Do I want to press down on this? No. But I will want to tap it to make sure we get uh, constant contact. Now I'll talk a little higher because you always want to make sure you've got great, great ventilation in your house. So there we go. My New York strip is in a searing hot pan, seasoned on both sides. And if you take a look right across this, these drum wires. At about two to three minutes in, I'm going to lift the steak and I'm going to turn it 45 degree end, at a 45 degree angle. Should I flip the steak? Should I touch it anymore? No. We only want to turn the steak over once to seal it and make sure we get all the appropriate juices. I can smell the steak, it's beautiful. One of the things that I look for is that golden brown delicious smell. And that's actually a chemical reaction. The reaction's called the Maillard reaction. And to get a little bit scientific on you, it's just simply the denaturing of proteins in, a, uh, in an environment around sugar. We find that in all types of protein, especially in beef. So can I look, can I peek under the hood? Yes, I can. So I'm going to take my steak and I'm going to lift it and see if I have grill marks. I'll turn this over for you. Look at those grill marks. They're perfect. See those grill marks? Now I'm going to take the steak and I'm going to turn it 45 degree angle. As you'll notice, I'm patting down the steak, but I'm not pressing it. One of the things that I can't stand is when I see people on, uh, on grills and, uh, and barbecues where it's burgers or steaks and we do it. Men do this all the time. They take the spatula and they press down. All of the juices get expelled from the steak and we lose that. It may look fun because it's flaming up, but all of that juice that falls on the grill should be in our steak that we're eating. 
All right, so how do we know when our steak's done? There's so many rules where you pinch your finger, pinch your thumb, touch your nose. That's how you can tell if it's, uh, if it's perfectly cooked for you, rare or medium rare. Um, here's what I think. Everybody should have a trusted thermometer on them. And the way I like my steak is anywhere from a, uh, a medium rare to rare. That's going to be 120 degrees to 125 for rare. 125 for about 135 for medium rare, and then medium well and well above that. Always check with your uh, uh, with your uh, food and drug administration for the proper cooking techniques. I know I love steak cooked in the medium rare. You cook it the, uh, the way that you, uh, you best enjoy. It. Okay, so we're going to flip our steak, and we'll be back in just a second. So you can see I've got a really beautiful, nice smoke. The whole room is not over overfilled with smoke. I know this steak is cooking at the right temperature, searing a high heat pan. And now I'm going to peek under the hood and see if we got our secondary hash marks. Look at that, we do. So I'm going to take my steak, I'm going to turn it over, and lay it back on the grill. Now I'm going to clean up my station and make sure I have a good clean cutting board to rest my steak. You can see our hash marks there. Look at the crisp hash marks. And I'm going to do the same thing on the next side. I'm going to turn our fan up a little bit. So let me finish this on the same side. It's about two to three minutes each side. When I'm done, we're going to pull this off and rest this on our cutting board. Okay, so we're uh, perfectly cooked on the opposite side. Again, about two to three minutes on each side. You don't have to worry about hash marks on this side. The presentation side or the top side is most important. So I'm going to pull my steak off now, put it on a clean cutting board, and let it rest. Pull my uh, grill pan off the heat, turn off my heat. How long do we want this to rest? You can have your, uh, your steak uh, rest anywhere between 5 and 15 minutes. If you want to wait longer, don't hesitate to get some tin foil and put a tent over top of it. I think we're fine. I'm going to let this rest for a ten, about 10 minutes and we're going to bring it back to our, uh, our table and cut it open for you to uh, take a look and enjoy. Okay, welcome back. Well, my beautiful uh, cast iron grilled New York strip steak has been resting for a little bit more than 10 minutes. I checked the internal temperature with my thermometer. I'll show you again. Uh, I would urge everyone purchase one of these. Use your thermometer. When you insert your thermometer in your steak, make sure you don't, you don't you go to the thickest part. And uh, we're gonna go insert. And my temperature right now is at 125. So it's actually cooled down just a bit. I temped it uh, a couple minutes after, and when I pulled it off and left it on my cutting board, it was at um, about 127 degrees. So if you're looking for rare, you want uh, 125 to 130. Again, uh, medium rare, 125, 130 to 135 and above that is medium well and well. So my steaks rested uh, quite beautifully. All of those juices have reabsorbed themselves and redistributed themselves into the steak. If we were to cut that steak right then and there, the moment it came off the heat, all of our beautiful juices would spill out and, uh, and go, be left on the cutting board and not where we want them uh, inside of our belly. So I'm gonna take my uh, chef's knife I'm going to hold this up and I'm going to start to cut our steak and take a look at this. All right, so let's cut. I'm going to cut on an angle and see how this steak comes out. Look at that, beautiful. Look at that. Slowly cut it, fold it away. You can cut your steak as thin as you like. So take a look at that. Look how beautiful that is inside. You see the crusty, crisp deliciousness on the outside. And you can see my steak is a perfect 
medium rare to rare. I'll keep cutting this. Now, I seasoned our steak beforehand. For those that like to season their steak afterhand, you can use some beautiful uh, sea salt, or what I like is Maldon Flake salt, and you take this, sprinkle this over top of your steak. At that point, if you wanna add a little black pepper, please uh, don't hesitate to do that. And there's your steak. You can serve that with a twice baked potato. In the summer, uh, corn on the cob, string beans, delicious, delightful New York strip steak, cooked medium rare. Let me take a quick taste of this. I'm not sure if you could hear that, but that break into the crust is stunning and delicious. And from there, I am good to go. So, excuse me for eating while I'm on the, uh, I'm on the, uh, the video with you. I'll actually have a sip of coffee here. I urge you to get some coffee or a cocktail. Get yourself outside grilling or inside in a cast iron grill pan. You'll have the most delightful time. Hope to see you on the seven seas. My name again is uh, Chef Stefano and good cooking to all of you. Enjoy. Well, I gotta take another bite of this.